everyone, so before we begin with our video, we would like to make a small request. Kindly subscribe to our channel and like the video if it helps you and also share it with your friends who may benefit from the same. So in this video, we'll be simulating um, incrementally conductance for PV and PPT and this is a PV array block that I've used. Um, it's inbuilt in the sense like I've built it myself. Um, so um, I'll be dropping a link in the description below for this PV array block that you can use for your simulation as well, it'll help. So yeah, and um, let's begin. So we have a PV array block. Um, we will need signal builders to build the irradiance and the temperature signal builders. So what you would do is you would have to set the signal builder to, we we'll start with 1000 watts per meter square irradiance. So Y is equal to 1000. And then we'll uh, move it somewhere around 850, 900, and then we'll keep it at 800 as well. Okay, so this will be irradiance. I'll name this as um, irradiance as well. Now, um, yeah, so we'll name this as um, temperature once it's done. And temperature will be on 25 degrees Celsius. So it will be advisable to move it to uh, 25 degrees, 25. So y is equal to 25 and get everything 25. We'll keep constant temperature, but for your model, if you want, you can vary temperature as well. So yeah, so once that's done, let's name it as um, temperature. And now um, we'll keep, we need a series RLC branch for the capacitance in parallel with the uh, PV array. So name it as uh, C. So we'll drag this capacitor, um, we'll rotate it and kind of across the terminals of the PV array. And um, yeah, so now we also need a voltage measurement block to measure the voltage across the capacitance. Okay, so yeah. And we'll need um, a current measurement block to measure the PV current, that's the current flow that's going out of the PV array. Now we'll need another series RLC branch for the inductance. Um, capacitance value you can keep it as 100 e power minus 6. And resistance will be 0 0.005 and inductance will be 0 0.005 as well. It's an RL branch. Yes. So you click on OK. Um, so if you guys want to know the design of um, converters, you can refer to our videos on various DC to DC converters that we have. And now we'll rotate the IGBT block as well. Now, yeah, we'll rotate it and connect it. Now we'll need a diode, which will block reverse current. Connect that as well. Um, copy paste capacitance. Yeah, um, change the value of this capacitance to 1200 e power minus 6. And we'll need a series RLC load because we'll be putting a resistive load of, um, um, which is not inductive, only it's, it's purely resistive, and it will be 100 e power um, 3. Active power will be 100 e power 3. Nominal voltage will be 500 volts. We'll keep nominal frequency to be 50. Um, but that shouldn't really matter because it's DC. So we'll just make it 100 e power 3. And inductive and reactive power will be 0. So it'll be purely resistive load. So this is essentially our um, circuit. Now we will need to provide the control. So we will need to measure the parameters of current and voltage. So we'll name this as um, IPV. You 
you can click on rename all to rename all the blocks that have that had a previously um it's, it's helpful and we'll measure the voltage and name it as um vpv So I've already written the code for the incremental conductance MPPT. So I will not be typing it out line by line, but I'll be showing you the code. For that, you'll need to go to MATLAB when you should get a function. You should go to library browser and you should get a MATLAB function block. Now we'll be discussing the incremental conductance code. So for that, I'll um, get an image of the flow chart as well. So to begin with, we take inputs of voltage, current, um, the old value of voltage, the old value of current and the current duty cycle. So now um, we'll initialize the duty cycle when there is uh, for the first iteration to be 0 0.4 and we'll calculate um, delta voltage and delta current and um, we'll take the, we'll take the step of the duty cycle to be um, five e power minus five, and uh, yeah. So let's begin. So according to incremental conductance, the first step is to check if the change in voltage is zero. So if the change in voltage is zero, we'll be going down this path in the beginning. So if the change in voltage is zero, then um, m is equal to d. That is um, that is if the uh, change in current is also equal to zero. Yes, that means there's no change in the uh, duty cycle. So M is equal to D. However, if delta I is not equal to zero and if uh, delta I is greater than zero, then M is equal to D minus D. Um, you can find that here. You can, you can either decrease here. So you decrease the duty cycle ratio and then it gets updated. Otherwise, the duty cycle has to be increased and it will get updated here and you have end 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 now else that is if delta v is greater than z is not greater is not equal to zero then you have to check for the incremental conductance that is di by dv if it is equal to minus of uh, i by v if it is so then um, there is no change in the duty cycle so m will remain equal to d otherwise if di by dv is greater than i by v so you come here then you have to um, decrease the duty cycle if the case is true otherwise you have to increase the duty cycle um, as you can see a d plus d and then you have n n n and in the end y is equal to m that's the output is equal to m and you have n as well so essentially this is what gets updated and the update where you have i of k minus one is equal to i of k and v of k minus one is v of k happens in the beginning itself um, in our simulink model where we have the memory block as well. So this is it for the uh, code explanation. Now we'll go back to the video wherein we simulate the model. So now let's go ahead and uh, complete the model. We'll need memory blocks. Um, you can use delay blocks as well, but I prefer uh, memory blocks um yeah so what this will do is it will store the previous value and it will also store it will store the previous value while you input the current value that way you do not have to worry about um having persistent in your uh, code which you can which if you if you if you're coded on matlab previously you would usually use persistent or you would use some sort of variable to store the previous value you would not have to do it in this case because we're using memory blocks. I just find it more efficient. Yeah, so saturation will help keep the duty cycle within um, the required range, within 0 to 0 0.9. Now you can connect the D. In your DC or DC converter. DC, uh, P, like you need a DC to DC um, PWM generator. So here I've connected it to the memory block. You do not have to connect it. 
So in the video here, what I've done is I've actually um, made a small mistake. I've connected the memory block directly to the DC to DC PWM generator. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to connect the DC to DC PWM generator to the saturation block and not the memory block. I've rectified this mistake in minute number um, 11.46, 1146, 11 minutes, 46 seconds. You can go there to see what small change I've made, but I suggest you to continue watching the video in this sequence. And yeah, you can, you'll come across the change in the end of the video. Our MPPT code has uh, worked. So make sure that your disc your uh, GI block is in discrete and one EPA minus six. And also make sure that your model um, configuration param is uh, ODE, diamond prints, and variable step. So the switching speaking frequency is uh, five kilohertz. So now let's go to simulation and we'll run the simulation. Um, before doing that, we'll just uh, make sure we can see it on the scope. So let's go to view, layout, two screens. So now I'll um, rectify the mistake. Um, I'll connect, disconnect the connection of the memory block and connect it to the PWM generator. And um, yeah, so let's simulate the circuit. And on simulating, we should see that the load gets 100 um, kilowatt as its demand is, and the PV power, PV array should also give 100 kilowatts. You can also verify by plotting the PV and IV curves and get the required uh, result. So thank you for watching this video. Um, hopefully it helped you. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Okay.